But I want to talk about uh, what's going on with Aetna, because this could have uh, some serious impact on a lot of exchanges across the country in terms of reducing competition and, in some instances, no, uh, no presence at all in some counties. Um, now, you've heard uh, President Obama now has come out for, as well as Hillary Clinton, uh, calling for the public option. Um, surprise, surprise. But uh, that obviously is not going to happen with the, the makeup of the House and the Senate as it stands now. Who knows? That could change. But um, there's new reports out as to what could be motivating this. As of April of this year, Aetna was saying, we anticipate some loss in the beginning. Now, of course, here's the issue. The exchanges are for individual health insurance. And it is generally people who are not getting it through their employer. No, always, I should say. Not getting it through their employer or any other source. There has been um, more people and more sick people who have been buying their insurance through these exchanges uh, than was anticipated. And part of that reason is because of the subsidies. And you still can purchase uh, individual insurance outside of the exchanges, which you do if you don't uh, get uh, subsidies. And so we have split off these, these exchanges are one risk pool, and the direct purchase is another risk pool. The problem is that the risk pool on the exchanges uh, turns out to be too risky for these insurance companies, which uh, you know, for a long time, I mean, years ago, we spoke to uh, Wendell Potter, who made it clear that the health insurance industry is a failed business model and could not do what it was set up to do, which is to provide health insurance for all Americans under the age of 65 who wouldn't get it uh, through Medicare. And that is because simply... We have an aged population. We have uh, 20% of uh, the, I should say, 80% of, of health care costs are borne by 20% of the people. The whole trick to the insurance industry is to not have those 20% people covered. And the exchanges has, have brought a lot of those people in. Some get uh, covered by Medicaid. The exchanges have made it uh, possible, still very expensive. Uh, but for a lot of those people to get coverage. And it turns out that the, these companies are, are losing money off of that. Now, part of it is one-time setup costs that could theoretically shrink over time. It is for someone who has not gotten regular health care, when they finally get health care, uh, the costs are going to be front-loaded. In other words, if I do no maintenance on my car for, I don't know, 25,000 miles, by the time I get to the mechanic, I'm going to have a lot of problems that have to be dealt with. But then after that, if I continue regular maintenance, I don't know, every 6,000 miles, every 7,500 miles, I'm going to be better off. To a certain extent, that's part of what is making it difficult for these insurance companies to make money. The other thing is, is that they look at the exchanges and they say, why are we participating in the exchanges where, when that is a risk pool that costs us more money versus the sales that we get to individuals outside of the exchange? In Vermont and Washington, D.C., insurance companies can't make that choice. They can only sell individual policies through the exchange. And so you, they don't have that problem in those two uh, areas, state and, um, I guess, city, because um, the risk pools become combined. And so the insurance company doesn't have this option between, like, a really profitable risk pool and a less profitable money-losing risk pool. But there is a, a now uh, reporting 
that suggests that that wasn't Aetna's only reason for leaving 11 of the uh, 15 states. Healthcare exchanges. And that, incidentally, will cover, will affect about 80% of their um, customers who are covered through the exchanges in total. Uh, Jonathan Cohn at Huffington Post has uh, uncovered a letter, which apparently he had uh, FOIA'd some time ago, that the about face that Aetna has um, announced in terms of now all of a sudden those losses that we had already projected and thought we could handle short term are just going to be too big and we have to get out. Um, may be a function of something else. A letter that the CEO of Aetna had written to the U.S. government, I guess presumably the um, the Department of Justice. This is from the, the Aetna CEO. In petitioning for the DOJ, or I should say in trying to uh, convince the DOJ not to step in and attempt to stop a merger between Aetna and Humana goes like this. It's very likely that we would need to leave the public exchange business entire, entirely and plan for additional business efficiencies should our deal ultimately be blocked. <laughs> the Aetna CEO Mark Burt Toloni to the Department of Justice If President Obama's uh, administration refused to allow the merger to proceed, he wrote, Aetna would be in worse financial position and would have to withdraw from most of its uh, markets. Quit, uh, 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 quite likely, all of them. So uh, there you have it. I mean, it is not necessarily a business imperative, but a, uh, a, a, maybe a, a making good on a threat. As recently as April, like I said, uh, Bertoloni, Bertolini told investors that Aetna could sustain losses on the exchanges for the time being because participation still represented a relatively cheap way to acquire new customers, particularly since the program was bound to have kinks in the early years. In other words, yeah, we'll take some losses for that first time that you come to a, um, a mechanic after uh, 12,000 miles of no care in your car. But now that we know you're there and the government has subsidized you showing up at the mechanic and we'll have you for years to come, it's worth our while. Apparently, in the following four months, that calculation was completely reversed. Um, so this is a problem that Frankly, I don't know what the solution is. Single payer. Well, no, 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 no. I mean, ultimately, of course. Um, But I don't know what the solution is because the solution, to the extent that there can be one, is going to have to be done on an agency level. Now, I don't know how it is that the exchanges in Vermont and in D.C. don't allow for insurance companies to sell individual policies outside of the exchange. But I imagine that is uh, the purview of state regulatory agencies that deal with insurance. So uh, maybe that'll start happening in some states, and you'll see people, uh, you'll see Aetna come back into the exchanges. Uh, I don't know. Uh, A public option would be, I mean, the idea of a public option would be essentially a, you want to call it a Medicaid buy-in, a Medicare buy-in. In these exchanges, a basically an insurance agency selling policies on the exchange that did not have to make a profit. <laughs> and uh, that would, of course, um, drive competition because these insurance agencies still theoretically want to be in business. And if they're not getting clients and they're not getting customers and they're losing out to um, 
to public insurance, then they're going to have to do something about that, obviously. Hello, you. I'm Sam Cedar. Looking for smart, progressive talk that is occasionally amusing? Well, subscribe to our YouTube feed. Subscribe to our podcast. Like us on Facebook and just generally enjoy us.